What's up guys, my name is Seth and you're watching Petro360 and today we're gonna go through the steps of turning a old rusty door into a little piece of artwork. Okay, so I went on to Facebook Marketplace the other week and I bought this pair of doors and a set of fenders from a 1965 Ford F100. So the real reason I bought these doors was I needed a window regulator for the driver's side of my 65 four-wheel drive F100. And you can't find them new, so you have to find them used. And on the prices on eBay and everything were just astronomical. And this set popped up and it had a good window regulator. So a new window regulator, if they were in stock, is about $130. I only paid $150 for the pair. And these had the glass, the window regulators, pretty much everything, as well as a set of fenders. So it was a score for me getting an original Ford part that was still in good condition that I can use for my truck. So I was left with a pair of doors and fenders, and I decided I was going to make some uh, wall art out of these. So this one I've already finished. This is actually my dad's uh, Christmas present. He has a red Ford race car from back in the day, and his numbers were 53. So I painted this one up for him, and... Um, He's already gotten it. I've got to take it over to him here pretty soon so we can mount it up in a shop. So today I'm going to go through and break down the steps of what it takes to take an old crappy rusty door like this and turn it into something nice that someone will want to hang on their wall. So the first step of this whole process is pretty simple. We need to get this door tore down to bare bones, essentially. Now we're doing that for two reasons. One, there's a lot of good parts in this that's hard to find now, the glass, the window regulators, some of the slides and the door mechanism. And we're also gonna try to lighten this door up. If someone's gonna actually hang this on their wall, this thing is obnoxiously heavy. So we wanna try and get this thing lightened up a little bit and get all the good parts out of it before we turn it into a piece of art. So with the back side of this door actually taken off, it's so much lighter. So now it's about 15 pounds, whereas before it was about 45. So as you can see here, this is the damage on the front side. All of this was Bondo and it, you know, water got in behind it and it flaked off. So I don't have much area to put the, uh, the logo that I'm going to use because I don't want to get too far down into here. I will have to cut down into this a little bit, but again, I kind of want this to look natural like it's supposed to be. So Right now, I'm going to go ahead and jump inside and actually cut out the vinyl stencil I'm going to use. And then we'll come back out, prep this, and see where it's going to land. Okay, and we actually printed out cheer wine. So this is a local uh, soda, kind of to our area. It's made in uh, Salisbury, North Carolina, and really popular around here. But not a lot of other places and figured it's gonna be a sweet logo to go on the side of here and thankfully where our damage is here is only going to cut up into this area which is totally fine so it's going to sit on here something like that so this kind of gives me an idea of the area that i need to focus on that the paint's going to lay on so uh we'll go ahead and start uh, scuffing this thing up So to go through and prep the panel, I used 220 grit sandpaper and orbital sander, and then I just went back with a red Scotch-Brite pad just to add a little bit of bite to the panel and get the high spots knocked down and get everything smoothed out. I followed that up, blowing off all the dust with compressed air and then wiping the panel down with wax and grease remover before I applied the stencil.
Okay, well that was painfully difficult to get these letters to lay down. This vinyl does not want to stick to this paint whatsoever. <clears throat> Don't know if it's the issue with the finish or the vinyl itself. This is new vinyl to me, so. But my next step is a little unorthodox. I am going to paint grease on this. So, if this panel would have flaked off, obviously the paint on top of it would have come off as well. And I don't want white paint to go there. So I'm gonna take a tiny little paintbrush and some wheel bearing grease and paint in there so that the paint does not stick on there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go in and try to get some of these bigger places and go ahead and do that process. Okay, so I got everything oiled that I want to not have paint stuck on it, so all the low spots. Then I uh, masked it off with the week's finest junk mail, and I'm just putting on whatever white I had in my cabinet. So the goal is to do probably three light coats. Light coats so it doesn't seep underneath this vinyl since it isn't stuck very well, and so it dries faster. The door itself is ready to go. Now it's time to apply some clear coat. And this is the clear coat I use, literally probably one of the cheapest clear coats you can get. Um, U-Pole makes some pretty good stuff. It's what my local paint shop recommends for doing random stuff like this. So uh, I'm gonna mix up probably six ounces of this four to one ratio, and we're gonna shoot it on with a cheapo Harbor Freight gun. All right guys, so now it's the next day. Our clear coat has dried overnight and uh, let's check out how this thing turned out. So if you like the video, make sure to check the description. I've got some of the tools and paints and stuff that I use in this project listed down below. And um, if you want to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.